everybody, I'm PJ with Princess Craft RV. Today, I am gonna show you around the Adventurer 901 SB. The 901 SB doesn't have a slide out, but what it does have is a really nice kitchen with lots of counter space and one of the largest wet baths in the industry. It's designed to fit a six foot, one ton truck or larger. So an eight foot would work just fine. Now, many people will put this on a dually, but if you have a single rear wheel, it might fit, just be sure to check those weights. This truck camper is gonna be listed at 2850 dry weight, but with all the options, you could add two or 300 pounds easily just with those options. So keep that in mind if you're figuring out if this is right for your truck. If you wanna go off-road, we always recommend a dually for that, even for this nine foot truck camper. Now truck campers are always sized by the length of the floor, and this one is nine foot five inches. So if you have any questions about truck camper fit, don't guess, just give us a call. We'll be glad to walk you through it. I always like to remind you that features and options, they can always change. So be sure to check those details if you're looking at one at your dealership nearby. All right, I'm gonna start inside like usual, so let's get started. The colors in here, they're so warm and inviting. There's no wonder this is called canvas. And why not? Because you could basically add any color scheme that works for you. So I love the neutrality of this. I also, while we've got this full view, want to point out the floor. It's got that reclaimed wood look. I love all the different tones in it because that hides all the dirt and the tracks when you're camping. We're going to start right over here at the dinette. Now it's 40 inches wide, 72 inches long. So that's a full six foot in case you need to sleep some adults. I like the storage underneath. When you look at this, there is seven drawers in this kitchen. If you count both sides, pretty amazing. There is no storage under this side, but the drawers on the other side are going to add that storage for you. Again, I just love the colors on this. It's a nice size dinette and it has kind of a matte finish on the white stone look that is the tabletop. This table goes into a bed so easily. I like to show you how that works. It's very simple. You just move the latch underneath and push down. Now you push it down into place, pull these cushions over, and when you're done, so easy to set it back up again, just lift that table up and fold that clip back. You don't have to take this off of poles, move those poles, pull everything apart, and then have to find a place to put it. Very simple to do. Nice window right here with the screen, so you get a really nice breeze here. Similar window on the other side, so you could create a cross breeze and a power fan right in the middle. Just a great design for a living space. More storage on top. These flip up, which is always nice when doors flip up and out of the way. And this is 10 inches deep, so you've got a fair amount of space up there. It's about 10 by 10 and two lights underneath. It makes it a really nice lighting space right here because I know a lot of you work while you're on the road. Get that laptop out and can sit right here at the dinette. I think this is gonna be plenty of space for two people to work on computers as well. The seating isn't really shallow, doesn't feel tight. It is really comfortable. All right, let's close this. Now, remember I talked about options. There is an option for an electric bunk right here. So if you need a little more sleeping space besides the queen bed and the dinette, that's available as an option. If you're using this for a workstation, it's important to know there is a 110 plug just against the wall on the front of that other side. So it's easy to plug everything in. All right, let's go across the way and take a look at the kitchen. Right here, it's easy to see that this is the same thing you would find in a household kitchen. It's about eight inches deep. You have the cutting boards on both sides and it's a double sink. 
it's tough to find a double sink these days in a lot of RVs. So for those of you that really enjoy it, this is perfect. And of course, when you put these cutting boards on top, it can double as counter space. But take a look at the counter space in here. I, you know, I didn't measure this, but I would not be surprised if it's 30 inches or more right here in the center. That's, that's great workspace. If you needed more, there's always the table right across. And again, I love this stone look of this countertop. Easy to clean. It won't show marks. It's just a great feel. Storage right above. These cabinets, great pantry for the kitchen. It's 12 inches deep, um, but gives you a great space. I always look to see if cereal boxes will fit up there. No problem here. And to the right of these, let me get that closed, are all the controls. Now at the top is the monitor panel, which is gonna show you the fresh gray and black tanks. So on this, you've got 42 gallons of fresh, 28 gray and 28 black. Next to that, the water heater switch, water pump switch, the entry door lights and the porch light right outside. Now down below is the Jensen stereo and uh, it does have a CD DVD player there. Keep in mind that of course is gonna have all the Bluetooth, all the HDMI cables, but it is an option in this particular camper. On the right, you'll see the switch for the rear awning. Again, it's an option, but an electric awning on the back, it's just short of seven feet wide. It is such a plus. Now the eight foot side awning is an option as well, but that rear awning is gonna cover your entry. And that's why I love it so much. It is a power awning, so just push the switch to make it go in and out. And the switch up above it that lights up will tell you that the light is on at the end of that awning as well. Now let's look at the storage down below. Big space right underneath this sink. You do have the pipes from the sink coming across and down the edge. However, this is a huge space and it takes up all of the open area underneath these sinks. So you could configure this all different ways. I imagine some people might have a trash can and maybe some utility type goods there and others might use it for more pantry space. All kinds of choices for that really large space. You know, I'm gonna show you the three drawers here, but before I forget, the outlet, the 110 outlet is right here underneath this cabinet. So if you had appliances or as I always mention, my coffee maker would be right here on the counter and plug in up above. All right, let's look down here. All three of these drawers are the same size. This middle drawer, I'm gonna show you because I think you'll get the best view. What you can see is they're short. They do not go the full distance. Why? Because the back half of this counter holds your propane tanks. So they're about four inches deep and they don't open really wide, but wide enough to get to the back of the space. They're all three, as I said, the same size. And did you notice that? All these drawers have soft clothes on them. They are a little bit of a tug to open them, but closing them, pretty simple. Let me show you again. Give it a tug and it opens, but it closes really simply. Next to that, You've got the glass top, again, more counter space if you need it, but this just flips right up. And there is your three burner stove. Down below the stainless steel oven. And below that, another drawer. This drawer is a little bit more full size. So you've got about 12 inches of length here. It is not as short as these are, and it's only about three to four inches deep. But again, it is the most uh, efficient use of space. So I love drawers, particularly in truck campers. Let's look across. These drawers are quite nice. They're about six inches deep, and of course, a nice depth there. You've got two of them in a row, same size. 
And then on the step up into the uh, dinette, you've got one more drawer here. Again, a really good depth here. And this one is a little shorter than those over there. This one is only about three inches. All right. Really, this is a nice space. You can configure it to work for whatever it is you need. I didn't mention right here, you've got this Furion hood vent. It does have the fan and the light. Of course, you've got that power fan right behind you too. So if you're cooking something that might be smoky or really need some venting, you can always turn on that power fan as well. Above that is stainless steel microwave. So again, a great kitchen layout. We've got the refrigerator on the right side. It is gonna be the eight cubic foot domatic, two door, plenty of space in there. And like I mentioned, I wanna show you the space in this bathroom. Before I go in there, I'm gonna tell you this is six foot six in height. It's gonna come down an inch or two, of course, underneath the air conditioner, but that'll give you an idea of whether you'd be comfortable in this space. You guys know I'm five foot tall, so uh, always like to point that out. Now, when you step into the bathroom, it goes down to six foot two. So let's take a look and see what we see in there. The first thing I notice is that this is a one piece molded bathroom. And that is important because there aren't a lot of seams where the floor meets the wall or the corners that have to be caulked to maintain them. It's all one piece. The sink is molded in there as well. So that is a really nice feature for longevity. I'm gonna step inside. And the medicine cabinet has two shelves giving you three areas in here. You do have a pull down hanger. Lift it up and pull it down. I'm always hanging something up or maybe you just need a, a big hanger to hang your towel over to make it dry. That's always a nice feature. There is a fan here now, it isn't a power fan like the one that we have in the main cabin. It does have a fan on it, but it's much smaller, but it's very adequate for getting the steam out of the bathroom when you're taking a shower. There's a curtain that pulls across the door to keep the water in. And right behind me, you'll see it's a single shower head. Just lifts right out and you're ready to go. Now the six foot two, that goes into this skylight up here. So uh, you're probably about five foot 10 on the ceiling. Just so you know, goes up into the skylight if you're a lot taller than I am. All right, this is really quite a spacious wet bath. There is an opening down here underneath the sink. Let me open that for you. And that is where your toilet paper holder is. But besides that, it is really simply access to the water lines and the plumbing underneath. Uh, so not really a storage bin down there. You do see a vent here. This has a 20,000 BTU furnace and having a vent in the bathroom, especially in a four season camper like this, it's an awesome feature. Not all of them do. So if that's important to you, you wanna check the camper that you're looking at. All right, let's move on to the bedroom area. Before we get all the way up here, I wanna point out the step. The step is the same composite material that the countertops are made of. And so that's important because it's not carpet. It's easy to clean. It's gonna take a lot of wear and tear with stepping up and down, easily removable. And right below that, you'll see the converter, which has your breakers and fuses in it. And that is what converts the shore power to 12 volt. Next to that, you'll see the LP carbon monoxide detector. You always wanna be sure that's working well and the green light's on. All right, coming into this area, first thing I noticed, this is a foam mattress. It is not an inner spring mattress. So I don't know, it is really comfortable. I think I'm ready to take a nap right now. It's a true queen, so it's 60 by 80. Standard sheets are gonna fit just fine. Now. Over here on the left side, there is a controller for the solar panels. This trailer has a standard 100 watt solar panel on the roof, but you can add two more. That's 300 watts of solar up on the roof if you add both options. 
To the left of that are the connections for the TV because there is a backer right here in case you wanted to add a television up here in the bed area. Below that, the 110 plug. Now it's great for anything you want to add up here, an alarm clock, uh, maybe a charger. If you're going to be plugged in at a campsite, you'd have a charger for your phone. Anything that you'd like to plug in there, there is about six inches space between the mattress and the wall. So again, make that as useful for what you need to carry up here. Now I'm going to scoot back and show you a little more of the storage next to the head of the bed. One thing I didn't mention when I started sitting on the end of the mattress, it's 36 inches at the entrance from here to the ceiling. Now it does slope down just a bit, so a little shorter on this side, but still really comfortable. There is a really nice side table over here and a drawer that pulls out, although it doesn't pull out all that far. So, you know, don't get too excited, but there is plenty of space in there to keep some of the things that you like next to the bed. The tabletop is very spacious, so lots of room at that point. There are plug-ins, the 12 volt USBs and the plugs, as well as a 110 plug on this side as well, and a heater vent. Window on this side and a larger one on this side for cross ventilation. But speaking of ventilation, the hikey roof vent is spectacular for that. I love to just lay in bed and look at the stars because that's, you know, a great thing to do. It is dual paned, as are these windows. They're all dual paned. Um, but you can open up the hatch, access the solar panels, or simply just get an extra breeze. You do have a blackout shade on one side and a screen on the other. Storage in the closet. The mirrored closet gives you plenty of hanging space. You can see a lot of that. Now the left half, the bottom half is a compartment on the outside. So you don't get full hanging space on the left, but you do on the right. You still get plenty of storage on the left side, uh, probably better for shelves or something like that. Now let's take a look on this side because I don't want you to miss a little bit more storage. On this side, this cabinet is open right here next to the mattress. It's hard to see unless I kind of push it down a little bit, but it is accessible right here from the back. You know, kind of a nice little hidden space there. Of course, a nice little tabletop there to put maybe a book or glasses or something that you want to have next to the bed. And that six inches I was talking about right here along the bedside, I think I could find some useful way to keep that organizing one of those things that I wanted to have really handy next to the bed. It's a nice open space with the windows on both sides, the mirrored wardrobe, and if you want some privacy, there is a curtain that pulls across the entrance. All right, lots of great things to talk about in here but I'm ready to go outside and look around. Stay tuned, that's where we're headed. First thing you'll notice out here, this nice wide step. Now this is called a comfort step bumper and it is an option on this trailer, but it adds a really nice open space for maybe setting something or stepping out. You notice this is folded over when it's folded up, you can still use it as a step. And it's this way because when it's on the truck, it's gonna be a little higher up and it simply folds down to reach the ground. You don't have to have any added steps here. Works great. There is some storage under there. So let's take a look at that before we go any further. Although it is covered by the steps, it's very easy access. Just fold this down, just like you would if you were uh, camping and it was high up on your truck and that's going to reach the ground. You can see how that works. This is sitting on a ledge so it lifts right off. Set this down over here and let's open this up and take a look. In this area there is a pull-out tray. That is a nice outside storage space and I like that it's metal so it's easy to clean if it gets dirty. Slide that right back in. It'll clip into place 
And on this side, there are the poles for the tank dump. You also have your battery disconnect right here on the left. So very easy to get to in the back. Now, one thing I like to point out when we look underneath a camper like this is it does make it very accessible to get to plumbing, to get to wiring. Uh, you can also see the wiring at the end of your tanks, your black and your gray. Uh, very easy if there has to be some maintenance or repairs there. You can also tell that this is very well insulated and a heated and enclosed basement, obviously. So all of that adds to the features that make this a great four season camper. Another great storage space right here on the left. Magnetic catch up there to hold it open. Really great features. I love the uh, diamond plate aluminum on the back and the sides, keeping it clean. So you can see there is a ton of storage inside and out on this design. Now let's step over here. There's a little more to look at. Now right now this looks like it's close to the ground. You probably would have this lifted up just a bit if you were camping, even if it was off your truck. And that is where your sewer hose is going to connect, obviously. I like to point out that there is a center of gravity arrow on most campers. Now what that means is that it's the balance point of this camper. So it needs to be right at the axle or just in front of the axle once you load it on your truck. In front of that, an outside shower. It comes with a nozzle that is going to work as a faucet more than anything. Um, it is a quick connect there so it's easy to put on and hot and cold. You also have city water fill inside here and a black tank flush. The lever on the right, the blue lever, now it's gonna control whether your city water hookup is going to go straight to the faucets or whether it's gonna fill your fresh water tank. Let's talk just a bit about the jacks. The happy jacks are electric on all four sides and they are an option, but one that we see on almost every camper that's out there. The controls inside are just inside the door. Very simple to do. You control each jack independently, or you can do all four of them at once. Makes it simple to load a truck camper. If you have questions about loading a truck camper, give us a call. We'll be glad to talk you through it. All right, let's move under here. Batteries are stored in the front. And now this has two interstate batteries. So these are obviously standard wet cell batteries. They do require a little bit of maintenance. I always recommend on these front battery compartments that you go with a no maintenance battery and that could be an AGM or it could be a lithium battery. If you're planning on camping without plugging in at the campsite, I always recommend the solar panels on top and the two lithium batteries here. It gives you the most power you can get off the grid. On this side of the camper, there's the vent for the refrigerator and the 20,000 BTU furnace. This is the propane compartment, two five gallon propane tanks. I love it when they're side by side. Uh, this layout gives you easy access when you wanna pull one and refill it. You don't have to pull out a tray. It's just real simple to do. All right. Let's talk briefly before I let you go about the four season capability here. This is a great camper for four seasons. It has great insulation on the walls, the ceiling and the floor, thermal paned windows, heated and enclosed underbelly to keep those tanks warm. And you know, 20,000 BTU furnace, you're gonna be really toasty in this camper. I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV. If there's a question I haven't answered, please let us know. We'll try to answer all your questions. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.